morning, good morning all, and welcome to New Life Redemption Church service, Sunday morning service. God bless you, and good to see you all for whatever that you're watching me this morning. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. God bless you. This morning, um, I have a word, a message this morning for somebody. The Lord says, I should tell you something good is coming out of this wreckage. Amen. Something good is coming out of that wreckage. I don't know who this word is for this morning. I want to encourage you by this word. Hallelujah. God, you know, when God speaks, the heavens listen. Amen. When God speaks, the heavens listen. God is saying to somebody this morning, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Something good is going to come out of that pain. Amen. Something good is going to come out of that pain. Maybe you are in a, a difficult place this morning. I don't know what circumstance that you find yourself in or amen. Similarly, perhaps you find yourself in an it's a seemingly impossible situation. God is speaking to somebody this morning. He's dropping a word of encouragement and he said I should tell somebody that something good, something great, amen, something unbelievable, amen, is going to come amen. out of that pain, amen, hallelujah. hallelujah, it's going to come out of that situation. I don't know what kind of mess, wreckage, or fire you are walking through or you have been through but the good news, amen, the good news amen. is something good is going to come out of that experience, amen. We, God is a God of hope and he is a God of possibilities, amen. God is a God of possibilities, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah, glory be to the Lord church family, amen. Yeah, I want you to believe it, believe it like something that Amen. A, 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 a good news. Hallelujah. Believe it in your heart. Amen. Amen. Don't lose focus on God because He's speaking to you this morning as He's speaking to me. Amen. Something good. Amen. Something great is coming out of, it's going to come. Amen. Amen. You are going to experience something new from that wreckage. Amen. Maybe. Maybe it's a failed relationship. Maybe your marriage is not what you are, have been expecting. Amen. Maybe it's a job problem, financial crisis. Amen. You see, religion has conditioned the Christians or people to believe that God only operates. Overflow only comes when we have economic, uh, a bumper harvest. Religion condition people to believe that, amen, amen, growth only comes when the economic indices is good, when we have abundant production. People often believe that that is when miracles happen, but that is not the way it goes in the realm of the spirit or in based upon the divine principles of God. You see, in God's economy, God does not, economy does not follow man's economy. That's right, amen. God's economy is different from man's economy. See, when things are tough, when things are not so pleasant, these are the times when God is looking for someone who will act, amen, by faith. Someone who will step out so that that person will be a testimony to the miracle of God. Amen. When Jesus walked on the face of the earth in the human form, there were people who were there, but they never received miracle. They never got healed. There were those that never got their problems solved. Amen. Amen. Because they could not connect. Amen. Amen. With Jesus. They could not connect with him. So in a time like this, I hear testimonies of people buying 
new houses, not one, not two. I hear testimonies of people launching out their business, people moving into new, better careers. Man. But we also hear those people who are redundant, who are not going anywhere in their career. We also know there are people who are struggling to make ends meet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But by God's grace, we know there are people who are testifying on the wonderful grace of God upon their life. We hear people getting married, children are being born and dedicated. One thing I've always believed, as the scripture says, as long as the earth abides, seed time and habit time will never cease. Amen. The sun comes after darkness, after the night. There's a daytime, right? Summer always follows what? Spring. Spring always follows winter. So these things are programmed and it has not stopped to happen. So we must not lose hope. Amen. God has not stopped to operate. Even in the most difficult circumstance, God still abides. Amen. Amen. So I don't know what kind of mess, wreckage, mistakes, or mistake, wrong choice that you may have made. But I know we serve the God of second chance. Amen. We serve a God of second chance. Amen. You see, God promised us beauty for ashes as a crust of the very life in his words. Amen. Amen. The very life in his words, which is in his word, which is life. You know, the word of God is life. Yes. The word of God is living. Amen. He speaks in Isaiah. The reason why I say speaks because the word in Isaiah is alive. The word of God is alive. Amen. So we speak it not as a past tense. We speak it as a present and the present continues. Yes. And futuristic tense. Because the word of God is alive and is living. Amen. God speaks in Isaiah 61 to assure us that no destructive force in our lives is greater than his plan and his purpose for us. Amen. No destructive plan. Amen? That is greater. No challenges. The Bible says there is no trial. Amen. No temptation that has come to us. Amen? Praise the Lord. That we will be able to overcome. That we will be able to overcome all of them. No trial or temptation that has come to us. By which God has not provided to us. Amen. A way of escape. Amen. Hallelujah. Wreckage. What kind of wreckage are you going through right now? Does your life sound like a wrecked train, a wrecked bus? Spiritually speaking, you see, life can be, the journey of life can be construed metaphorically as a wrecked train or a wrecked bus. A wrecked bus is not going anywhere. It's a wreckage, a pile of wreckage. Maybe that's what you're going through financially. Maybe that's what your marriage look like. Maybe that's what your relationship is looking like. We are serving a mighty, a mighty, mighty God that could turn that mess into a message only if you do not give up hope. See, the word of God is living. Amen. I have been in the ministry for 20 years. I can testify to you of the mercies and the goodness of God, they never cease. The Bible says they are new every morning. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this, that he, he, oh, I don't know if somebody listened to me. He says, being confident in this. This is the most Paul saying this. This is the assurance that he has. That means being confident in this. In what? Hear this. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, New International Version. Paul says, being confident in this, that he who began a good work, a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day Jesus Christ comes. Amen? Amen. He that formed you in your mother's womb, he is faithful. God never fails. 
God never fails. He is faithful to carry out his plans for you to the completion until the day Jesus Christ returns. Philippians 1 6. The woman at the well. What was so profound about her story? The woman Jesus met at the well at the midday, very unusual time for women to come and fetch water at the well. She came by herself, alone, which was also not part of the tradition. In that time, when women maidens go to fetch water, they go in groups. They don't walk out alone. They accompany one another. But she came out alone because something was wrong. The Bible says she had tried several times to be married, to live with her husband. Five times she tried. It didn't work out for her. Her life seems like a wreckage. She did not meet societal standards. She had failed five times. How many times have you tried at your job? Maybe to try to be that model wife, that model husband, that uncle that is the ideal uncle. Maybe that daughter that is the most ideal daughter, husband, uncle, cousin. At your job, you put in more than is required. How many times have you tried at life purpose and it seems like each time you try, your train just get wrecked. Mm. You crash it. Because maybe you did it, you did it, made that decision based upon the limited information that you have. Or because nobody else had made a pathway for you. You try to do things the way you know how. But each time you try, you fail. But I'm telling you from today onwards, as you hear this word, and you stand on the word of God. And you put him first. For the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added unto you. Amen. Many of us have received vision about how the future is so glorious and beautiful. But we didn't wait for God to finish what he has started. We thought that we can move things a little further. We thought that we can, we can be a little faster. We can get ahead of others. You know, I've learned many years ago, I was in a university. Back then, the lecturers and professors were on a labor union strike. Six months we were home because they could not resolve the issues about salaries and conditions of their job. Six months we were home. I was young, I didn't know what to do. It wasn't easy getting a job. I got frustrated. Many of, of us, my friends, and we all got frustrated. We, we, we just hang that. We got tired of hanging out. We just wanted to finish school, follow our dream. Like every other young man, second year in university. Six months, moving to seven months, to eight months, almost a year, we were home. One of my brothers, my older brother, came to me. He told me, he said, let me tell you something, brother. It is not he that started the race that finishes first. Amen. I still remember, this over 20 years now, over 20 years, 25 years now. He said, let me tell you something, my little brother. It is not he that starts the journey that finishes first. It is not he that starts the race first that finishes first. He told me that and I was, I felt a little better. Amen? Amen. I felt a little better. And up to today, I still, that word still resonates in my life. In everything I do. It is not he that comes first that why not becoming the first. Jesus said some said sometimes in life the first will be what the last and the last will be the first. Man. This is not in any way Man. saying that somebody should always expect to stand at the back when you are meant to be in the front. For the Bible says we shall be above and not beneath the head and not the tail. But when you have tried all you could, when you have put all effort when you have read and spent, born your midnight Amen. oil. When you have pushed so hard. Hallelujah. You have done all that you want to do. Amen. To change Amen. the history. Hallelujah. To change, Amen. To change the narrative of your life. You see, some of us are not comfortable with average. We are not comfortable where we are. Some of us are not comfortable with the little that we have. We want to push a little farther. 
We want to change the narrative in our family. We want to create a new path so that those that comes after us will find a platform to lean upon. Some of us want to push a little extra. We want to make a little extra effort. We want to put a little press a little hard. Amen. Forward. Amen. Amen. So that the, the ones that come after us will find a pathway where they can also build upon a platform they will be able to build their future on. Amen. But many times when we work so hard, we push so hard, we read, spend midnight hours and lost some sleeps, work extra hard. The more we work, sometimes it seems like the more we work, the harder it gets, the less success we accomplish. And if you do not have your hope, put your eye on God, you might begin to lose hope. Many times, people might even say to you, maybe there's a curse in your life. Maybe you are born with a bad luck. How is it that folks whom you started life with, they've all gone so far ahead, and you, you are still wobbling, trying to find your level. Amen. Amen. You see, human mindset limits God. The way mind, our mind play a trick on us, the way the devil influences mind's mind can make us to lose track and lose and limit God. Like I said earlier, there were many people in the time of Jesus Christ that were lepers. There were many who were blind. There were many who were crippled. There were many people who were demon possessed. But many of them did not receive their healings or their breakthrough. Jesus told us in the, on the story concerning Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Jesus said there were many widows in the land of Zarephath. But only to that widow, that particular one, whom name was not mentioned, that God sent the prophet Elijah. Mm -hmm. God did not mention the, the widow's name. He didn't say her name is Stephanie. He didn't say her name is Josephine. Amen? Amen. He didn't say her name is Crystal. He says he has sent Elijah to the home of a widow. Amen. So Elijah was looking out for this particular widow. But Jesus is telling us something here. Amen. Look at the life of this woman. She was a widow. No husband. No source of income. Mm -hmm. No social security or pension to fall back on. And she had a son whom she had to take care of. Yet, yet the drought, the drought, the drought, the, the drought hit so hard in that country. Three and a half years there was no rain. And these people depend dead so much on rain for their crops. What life means is when there's no rain, there will be no crops. Because the rain affects the crops, the animals, the sheep will not produce healthy cows. So they have a vicious cycle of life pattern where they were dependent on the rain. When there's an abundance of rain, they will have an abundance of harvest. When there's no rain, that means the crops, a man praise God, will not produce. The sheep will not have healthy grass to feed upon right. so that they will produce young calves. So they have a vicious circle. So there were three and a half years of no rain. I'm sure whatever they have in the storage, they've all consumed it. And this woman says she had nothing to live upon, which means after that last meal, they will surely will starve to death. But the prophet of God said, no. I know your life may be wreckaged right now. But the God that I serve have told you. Amen. That goose oil, that floor that you have in your house, will not run what? It will not finish. It will not dry. Amen. And as I speak right now, maybe you are standing on the, in the last anointing of your life, on the edge of giving up. Perhaps... You will believe this morning that we serve a mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. Who works in a way that, hallelujah, man cannot figure out. The thing with our mind is, our mind is programmed in a way that we reflect on our, ex we respond to environment. We respond to what we feel or what we've been told. We respond to what we know of. Amen. See, when we have heard something, nobody have done this before. 
Nobody has ever made this kind of breakthrough. You see, we hold up on those statistics, on those records. So it becomes impossible to believe in what we do not even know about or what records that nobody has ever uh, beaten or broken. Hallelujah. Amen. Human minds often tend to limit God's capability. God has no limits. He has no limitation. God has no boundaries. Amen. The Bible says who can contain against God? This morning I want you to believe that there is nothing that is impossible with God because through Him all things are possible. Amen. God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can believe or even think. He says he can do exceedingly and abundantly. You see, we talked about good measure. Shake down, shake it together, run it over kind of blessing. When God do things, nobody can change. When God approves, nobody can disapprove. That's right, amen. He is sovereign. Amen. God above all God, his courts is the court of heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. When God makes a decision, it is final. Amen. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. So Jeremiah, God said to him, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for God? This was not a statement of question. This is a statement of facts. When God told Abraham, I will make of you a father of nation, Abraham looked at himself and Sarah and is sure this is impossible. This is Definitely impossible. I have never heard a woman of 65, 70 gave birth. How much more a man who is close to 100 years old father a child? His generation, people born at the time of Abraham where many of them had gone. And yet God says, I am going to start something new out of these dry bones, out of this frail body, out of this weak mind. I am going to start something afresh. Let us not limit God. Amen. He is a God of possibility. And can we rise by faith Amen. and believe? Dream big. God says dream big. He wants us to dream big. We don't limit God. You got to dream big. When I see people with big dreams, I feel challenged. I feel inspired. A pastor, a bishop friend of mine told me one day, his church had need for money to meet up rent because their building were sold. They needed a new place to rent to start a church. And they didn't have much in their savings. He was frustrated and he was laying in the bed to take a nap because he got tired of worrying and thinking about his church because they sold the building. Now they are forced to find a new place. They have no savings. This man, Bishop said, he lay down in the bed and wondering and then he was he was running things in his mind wondering what's going to happen I mean the Lord rhetorical question came to him and said if God should ask you right now how much do you need for a church to buy your building own your building what how much will you ask he said I'm gonna probably need like ten thousand dollars the Lord said is that how much you're going to work and then he thought to himself he said, maybe fifty, sixty thousand dollars He said, is that it? He said, maybe $100,000. He said, is that it? He said, okay, let's just make it $50,000 right now. I'll get a building. See, I'm telling you, God walks in mysterious ways. Amen. You hear the voice. God speaks to us. Some of us wait until we see angels. Some of us wait until prophets come to you. But when God speaks to us, even at midnight hours, God speaks to us in our situation. He uses many things to talk to us. This bishop said, the Lord told him, go and look for a place. He stood up and just left the bed. See, when God drops a word of faith in you, you become like a, a wild lion. You hunger for something. I would say, they that wait upon the Lord shall be like my Zion, that shall not be more. Bishop went to the areas where he was hoping to found to establish his church and he found a building and the owner says 3,700 a month Bishop looked at the building and said yeah this definitely will be a good place for the church meanwhile he didn't have enough he said he had only $20 they only have 
he had 20, I think $20 or $200 he said he had. They had in the check, left what was left in the check. He said he had only $20, but then uh, $200, and then, I think $200, let's just say $200. And then he was he went to negotiate for a building $4,700 a month. It takes their faith, amen, to rise up, to believe in this type of uh, of God. Amen. The landlord says, okay, when are you bringing the deposit? Of course, they take two ways plus one month rent. We add 750 plus uh, 7,400 into three places. You know how much that is, right? Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Over $10,000. And this man didn't even have a thousand dollars in his pocket. Amen. Faith would make you to do radical things. Amen. We're talking about something good is coming out of your wreckage. God is not done with you yet. Hallelujah. God has not finished with you. You have to speak it into your spirit mind. You have to speak it into your into that somebodyness, the spirit mind. That person that is in you, you have to tell him this morning, God is not done with me yet. Amen. God is not done with me. God is not done with my with me yet. I have something Amen. to deliver to the world. There's something about me. There's a something God deposited in my spirit, in my mind, that I'm yet to birth. And no sickness. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 40 says, Neither power, nor principalities, nor death. Nor demons, nor even angels, shall stand against what God has planned for me to birth in this life. Bishop said, after that, he told the man, Monday, I will bring the money and I will sign the lease. He went home by faith. The same Saturday morning, he woke up with First Lady, and there was a guy who had made a commitment to the church. The commitment the man made, promise he made about certain business the man was pursuing, he came for prayer. Bishop prayed with him, anointed him. See, as men of God, we have different people coming to church to get prayed for. Yes. Some people come, they make promises, and they get results, they come back. Some get what they want, they never come back. Some we never even hear about them. But our duty is to minister. Amen. Unconditionally. You pray and minister and send them forth. You don't pray and hold them. You just pray for them and loose. Set them loose. Amen? Say, Amen. Set, them loose. set them loose. Set them loose. Every blessing. The blessings mm -hmm. of God. Blessings, what God has meant. The blessings of God. Bible says, shall make rich and add no sorrow. Amen. You see, yeah. when you... Amen. God gives you something, a seed. God plants something in your life and you let it loose. You, you release it to bless others. God will add on to you. Bible says, blessed, it is more blessed to give than to receive. A seed that is being put in you, you reverse, sow back that seed into the kingdom, into God's kingdom. The seed will multiply. Amen. Bishop said on Saturday, they woke up Monday is still a few days ahead. You know, sometimes when you need urgency, when there's an urgency, you know, you think you have enough time. Monday seems too far now. You know what happened? A phone rang and a, a member, a guy called and says, he wants to see the bishop at the office. Bishop said, yes. And then he said, remember when you prayed for me about this, this and that? The guy said, yes. And bishop said, the Lord has done what you have said. In fact, I have been procrastinating in the past few days to come see you. But I have something I want to tell you. I have a testimony. The guy came and the bishop, he dropped what he gave bishop, the seed that he sowed in the ministry, the tithe that he gave for the church. Amen. Amen. It was almost seven times. Amen. Almost, not seven. It's about 10 to 20, 20 times what was the building was worth. They had enough money to pay rent for even a year. Amen. Let's say a year's worth of rent. I'm giving this very testimony to show you that no matter how sad, how bad your life is, 
Jesus Christ is able to give you a turnaround. Amen. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 11, 32, they that know their God shall be strong. That even in the midst of simile, that is paraphrased, I added a word to it, not added, but I paraphrased it. Amen. Amen. Emphasis. I added emphasis. Daniel 11, 32. One of my favorite verses. It said, they that know their God shall be strong. Even in the midst of adversities, and they will do what? Mighty exploit. Mighty exploit. Amen. We have been called to subdue. We have been called to dominate. We have been called to rule over what God has created. To do exploit for the kingdom of God. Amen. You see, Jesus' ministry did not do so well in Nazareth. Why is that? Because the ministry of Jesus Christ suffered a shipwreck in Nazareth. Why did I say that? Because people didn't believe. Because of unbelief, he didn't do much miracle in Nazareth where he grew up. Amen? Amen. Don't get too comfortable with unproductivity. Don't get too comfortable with failure. Don't get too comfortable with redundancy. Don't get too comfortable with negativity. Don't get too comfortable with rejection. See, what these things does is when you become too comfortable, they become a permanent place in your life, in your narrative. The Bible says, as a man speaks, as a man's heart is, so it is he. As the conditions of our heart, see, negativity, failure, disappointment, after a while, it becomes a permanent place, a permanent thing, a permanent sin. It becomes a dominant in our narrative. That's why it's always good to hang around, draw close to people who will encourage you, people who will lift you up, people, amen, praise the Lord, whom God has appointed to be a source of help. Isaiah 61, verse 3 says, though, emphasis added also, though life may throw, simulate impossible situations to you, not as a result of your choice. Not every mistake or every bad thing that happens to us in life is a result of bad choice. Sometimes things happen not because of what you have done, not because of your mistakes, not because of, praise the Lord, where you were born. Amen? Sometimes things happen. Not very pleasant things happen. Praise the Lord. Amen? Not Amen. because of what you have done, not because that's the punishment. But it's just